victims of our unconscious, we cannot grasp what we long for or are terrified by. This guy is so dramatic. I hate calling people dramatic because it feels kind of gaslighty, like you're discounting their feelings or their thoughts. But it's one thing when someone's dramatic because they're expressing their feelings and yeah, don't call them dramatic, let them express their feelings. It's another when they're doing it to sort of paint a certain type of picture and then profit from that. Wait, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's just check out the video. Let's start it from the beginning. Again, I'm a licensed therapist. If you've seen the other videos, you probably already know that. I'm going to go through this. This guy's not a therapist, but it's okay. Everybody's allowed to have their opinions. Let's go through, just kind of verify, see what's going on. Let's start it from the beginning. When one is in a bad place in one's head, the modern world offers three main sources of help. Psychiatric meditation. I'm sorry, did they just say psychiatric meditation? Hold on, let me, let me rewind that. Main sources of help. Psychiatric meditation. I'm sorry, we're eight seconds in and that's... A weird error to make right I mean this is like the first line of the video and he just unmistakably said psychiatric meditation I, I mean one, one more time hold on offers three main sources of help psychiatric meditation <laughs> okay so they do say psychiatric meditation I don't know what to do with that it's a mistake obviously it's not a huge error to make but it is a little weird when you're eight seconds into a video and they confuse meditation and medication anyways let's see these three types of what are three types of ways to improve yourself when one is in a bad place in one's head the modern world offers three main sources of help oh these are the three main sources of help the modern world offers i don't know i i'm a little skeptical just hearing anyone use the phrase modern world it feels kind of like uh weird like where are we drawing the lines it feels like you're trying to get a lot of people on your side before really saying anything oh yes this modern world that we live in but uh, anyway so the three main types of help that we get in this modern world are psychiatric meditation <laughs> psychiatric meditation cbt and psychotherapy each one of these has its own advantages and drawbacks medication can be exemplary in a crisis at points when the mind is so under siege from fear anxiety or despair that thinking things through cannot be an option i'm sorry are they they made the person into like a magnet like their head is a magnet i didn't realize that the first time watching it but their head is a magnet and that's actually doesn't seem like a random choice because look at what they say to describe the sort of experience of someone taking medication correctly administered without requiring any conscious cooperation from us pills play around with our brain chemistry in a way that helps us get through to the next day and the one after that's a bad way to represent medication <laughs> that was the second red flag after psychiatric meditation without requiring any conscious cooperation from us what are they talking about Literally anyone who's taken psychiatric medication, or any medication, frankly, but especially psychiatric medication, knows that getting yourself to take it is actually not always that simple. For many reasons. You could be too depressed to take your antidepressants. You could be too distracted to take your ADHD medication. You could just have other stuff going on. It could be hard to remember. The, the symptoms that people deal with, if we want to get clinical, get in the way of the solution sometimes so it's not at all simple or trivial to say oh people do it without conscious cooperation i mean wh what like that is a very odd way to frame medication it's this passive sort of experience and that's i guess why they make it a magnet the person's a magnet like they're suffering so much that they're just a magnet for medication and obviously magnets don't consciously do anything they just you know passively ha attract I guess the other thing. So here he's saying you're passively attracting the solution to your problem or something. There is a lot of conscious cooperation and people deserve props sometimes. They deserve credit for taking their medication. It's not easy at all for people to regularly take their medication. And also even the decision to take medication is a huge one that takes a lot of conscious thought. But anyways, my main problem here is this sort of false dichotomy, like you're either able to think through your problems or you're taking medication. At points when the mind is so under siege from fear, anxiety or despair that thinking things through cannot be an option. And then that line, pills play around with our brain chemistry. Pills play around with our brain chemistry. 
This guy is a poet, and I don't mean that as a compliment. It's the, the way language is being used is in a poetic form. It's not sort of to convey truthful information, and I don't mean to put that harshly, but pills play around with our, what is it, brain chemistry? Pills play around with our brain chemistry. Pills play around, that's kind of a poetic, nice, you got assonance, pills play. But that's a fucked up way to portray it, you know, that's not how anyone who's like a professional would portray it. They play around with your brain chemistry. I know that medications have lots of issues, side effects, and problems for people sometimes. And I understand if you want to describe it as it felt like they were playing around with my brain chemistry. But if I have like millions of subscribers, or how many subscribers does this person have? Yeah, 7 million subscribers. I'm not going to make a video describing medication that's playing around with my brain chemistry. Medications affect your brain chemistry. That's how you speak truthfully. If you want to speak poetically, you can you can make school of life videos. Let's keep watching though. I'm sorry. I'm getting a little carried away. Let's keep we are not even close to the meat of it. We may get very sleepy, a bit nauseous or rather foggy in the process, but at least we're still around and functioning more or less. Yeah, we also may not get those side effects. I mean, some people get fogginess or nausea, but they're not necessarily things you experience. So, but anyways, it's this sort of portrayal of taking medication as a palliative, like you're just basically getting by, which is ridiculous. <laughs> some people take medications that actually help them tackle the symptoms. It's not just getting by. It's like, like, for example, some people, not all people with OCD will take uh, you know, some sort of SSRI or uh, similar medication where they actually can reduce the symptoms uh, and get through every day, not just dealing with the same symptoms of obsessive thoughts or intrusive thoughts or compulsive behaviors, they actually have less. So it's not just getting through with what you're dealing with. But again, you wouldn't really know that just watching this and the animation, it's, it's well done, obviously, but it's, it's like manipulative. Then there is cognitive behavioral therapy. CBT, normally administered by psychologists and psychiatrists in six to ten hour-long sessions which teach us techniques for arguing rationally with, and with any luck at points controlling, the ghoulish certainties thrown up by our internal persecutors. The ghoulish certainties thrown up by our internal persecutors? Cool, man. But anyways, we're getting this portrayal of CBT as like the rational, like you're, you're battling rationally. Um, there's this line that it's normally, uh, it's normally practiced by, or I think he says performed. It's normally practiced by psychologists and psychiatrists. I don't know why we're leaving out social workers and counselors and family therapists. And, um, like I'm a social worker, so I'm not just trying to be like butthurt that I didn't get a, a shout out in Alain de Pton's video. But what bothers me is this one line. In six to 10 hour long sessions, the six to 10 session line really bothers me because if you look up CBT, maybe you'll see stuff like that. Oh, it's like a limited time span. And there are like, I think, CBT practitioners who do limit themselves in that way. I know a, a practi practitioner who does ERP, exposure and response prevention, which is for people struggling with OCD. And they do a very limited, it's a 16 week sort of program. And that's, I believe, like the clinically recommended way to do it. So I, I'm sure people do this with CBT as well. I know a lot of therapists though. And I, I know a lot of therapists who, if you ask them, they would say, yeah, I practice like CBT and sort of like maybe psychodynamic psychotherapy, which is something that's a, sort of similar to what we're about to talk about. But I don't really know. I don't actually know any therapist who does CBT and limits themselves to six to 10 sessions. Uh, that would be seen as ridiculous by any therapist I've ever known. Six to 10 appointments. You're often meeting with people weekly. So six to 10 appointments is like, is like three months. You know what I mean? Like it's not even three months. And like usually... I'd say a good amount of time to do therapy, especially if you haven't done it before, is at least like six months. I mean, give it a shot, you know what I mean? But the point is, we're getting this falsely limited version of CBT, which I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but it is not the norm, at least not in the US. I know they're mostly based in the UK, but like six to 10 appointments of CBT is, is sort of this like watered down version of CBT that we're getting. And we're also getting this way of looking at it as like only purely rational. And you'll see why in a moment. It's so that uh, psychotherapy can come in and save the day. 
psychotherapy has a very hard time showing its efficacy in scientific trials, and it has to plead that its results are too singular neatly to fit the models offered by statisticians. Too singular to meet the models offered by statisticians. All these little nerdy statisticians, we get this image, again it's poetry, we get this image of these statisticians who just, they can't feel the power of psychotherapy. Well, you know, another word for statisticians would be, you know, psychologists, um, research psychologists, empirical psychologists, and I'm not here to bash psychotherapy. Uh, it's it's a practice that can help people. I say give it a shot if you want to. We're getting this, these are the downsides of psychotherapy, but get ready for the upsides. Also, it takes up a large amount of time, demanding perhaps two sessions a week for a couple of years. And it's therefore by far the most expensive option on the menu. Finally, psychotherapy requires active engagement from its patients and sustained emotional effort. One can't simply allow chemistry to do the work. I guess there's something strange to me about the way they acknowledge that it's by far the most expensive option on the menu and, like, don't say anything about that. Like, that, that is not just, like, a downside. That is a barrier to entry. <laughs> like, I feel like something else needs to be said about that. Like, most people can't afford two sessions a week for $100, $150 for years. It's not enough to, like, point it out. You have to, like, address it. This is something I talked about in my PragerU videos. You can't just note something and then act like you addressed it. Like, you, you have to actually, like, ad address it and respond to it and, and, and <laughs> incorporate it into what you say next. But it's more like, it's more like there, this video is saying, if that cost is too much for you, tough shit. And yet, psychotherapy is, in certain cases, a hugely effective choice, which properly alleviates pain. So here we get the phrase, properly alleviates pain, and we have our smiling magnet. But alleviating pain is kind of the same as what the meditation, I mean medication, did in the first example, right? Like, alleviate pain, help you get through to the next day. Like, But now we're having it framed in this extremely positive way. It's like, oh, it properly alleviates pain, whereas the other one only helped you get through to the next day. Those are pretty similar. Our unconscious feelings become conscious. A founding idea of psychotherapy is that we get mentally unwell, have a breakdown, or develop phobias because we are not sufficiently aware of the difficulties we've been through. Somewhere in the past, we've endured certain situations that were so troubling or sad, they outstripped our rational faculties and had to be pushed out of day-to-day -day awareness. Okay, I get this point that therapy can help you discover things that have affected you. Like, you might not realize how much certain things have affected you negatively, like, for instance, and therapy can help you rediscover it and sort of learn, okay, like, this did affect me and I can learn... But this thing that CBT can't help you do that, I mean, I'm, I'm really trying to make this point, like, the distinction is not as clear as this video is trying to make it sound, at least, at least not in America. This sort of false dichotomy of CBT where you're just rationally sitting around, so, would you like to maybe come up with some coping skills for your uh, maladaptive behavior patterns? Or like psychotherapy where I'm like, yeah, bro, let's, let's go deep. Let's go real deep. Just talk. Let's just float. It's like, it's not like that. And you, and you probably know this. If you've gone to a therapist, you've probably had a mixture of CBT and psychodynamic psychotherapy. So it's just a false dichotomy. And that bothers me a lot because, as we'll see at the end, School of Life is selling. They're selling psychotherapy. They're selling it. They have it for sale. This is an advertisement. So anyways, let's keep watching. Psychotherapy is a tool for correcting our self-ignorance in the most profound ways. It provides us with a space in which we can, in safety, say whatever comes into our heads. The therapist won't be disgusted or surprised or bored. They've seen everything already. Yeah, but the CBT therapist won't be disgusted or surprised either, Elan de Baton. So why are you, why are you creating this false dichotomy, dude? In their company, we can feel acceptable and our secrets sympathetically unpacked. As a result, crucial ideas and feelings bubble up from the unconscious and are healed through exposure, interpretation, and contextualization. Exposure, interpretation, and contextualization are absolutely part of the CBT therapist's uh, work. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. These are all parts of normal cognitive behavioral therapy. 
it doesn't have to sound so like hyper technologically modern cognitive behavioral it's just thoughts and behaviors you're talking about your thoughts you're talking about your behaviors psychotherapy is just like i mean if you know like psycho psyche that comes from like sort of a word meaning like spirit or soul if i'm not mistaken it doesn't mean you're actually like do like doing soul modification necessarily depending on how you look at things but I'm just saying they're just different ways to sort of describe a process. And there are big differences, but they are not these rigid differences that this video uh, sort of promotes. We cry about incidents we didn't even know before the session started that we'd been through or felt so strongly about. The ghosts of the past are seen in daylight and are laid to rest. This is a pretty minor problem I have, but I don't like this dramatic portrayal of therapy because if you go to therapy, you won't cry every session, probably. You, you might not cry for a while, depending on who you are. And like, I don't know that people should always expect therapy to be like a mind-blowing experience. A patient who needed to keep a depressed parent cheerful when they were small might feel compelled to put up a jokey facade whenever dangerously sad topics come into view. We transfer like this outside therapy all the time. But there, what we're doing doesn't get noticed or properly dealt with. However, psychotherapy is a controlled experiment that can teach us to observe what we're up to, understand where our impulses come from, and then adjust our behavior in less unfortunate directions. A therapist might gently ask a patient why they're so convinced they must be disgusting. Or they might lead them to see how their use of jokey sarcasm is covering up underlying sadness and terror. The patient thereby starts to spot the distortions in their expectations set up by their history and develops less self-defeating ways of interacting with people in their lives going forward. School of Life gives a pretty good description of transference and explains that it can take place outside the therapy session and that it, therapy can be like a controlled environment to try to work through transference. And that's all very true. It's just doesn't have to be psychotherapy. It can be cognitive behavioral therapy. 100%. There's no other way to put it. The lines are not so clearly drawn here, but if they're not clearly drawn, then Alain de Baton wouldn't have as good of a reason to sell you psychotherapy at the end by his own school, which charges 100 pounds a session, a 50-minute session. You pay 100 pounds, which is 120 or $130 where I live um, for 50 minutes of talking to one of his psychotherapists uh bit much that's a week's groceries for me so i i can't be throwing that money around the third reason why psychotherapy works it is the first good relationship oh this is the worst man why does he have to be so dramatic it doesn't have to be your first good relationship for any of this to be true. Why say that? Literally, why? I mean, that might be true for some people, but why put it in such stark, dramatic terms? What's the point of that? Does it really help people to hear this? Why does it have to be framed that way? We are, many of us, critically damaged by the legacy of past bad relationships. Yeah, love the word damaged in a video about therapy. Love the word damaged. The therapist is experienced as the first truly supportive and reliable person we've yet encountered. They become the good parent we so needed and maybe never had. I don't think any of my clients have experienced me as the first reliable or good relationship they've ever had. I don't think that's ever happened. All of my clients have good people in their lives who are supportive I mean, literally every single person, no matter how bad they're down. I mean, maybe there are some exceptions. I mean, when I used to work at a rehab, I guess there might have been people who had been who had like been on really bad terms with all their loved ones, not had any like, you know, healthy relationships at that time, maybe of checking into rehab. But then they get their healthy relationships back and there's usually some foundation. And I mean, it's just there's no there's no point in framing things in this dramatic way. One good relationship becomes the model for relationships outside the therapy room. The therapist's moderate, intelligent voice becomes part of our own inner dialogue. We are cured through continuous, repeated exposure to sanity and kindness. Oof, I do not like the word cured in a video about therapy. I don't know, really rubs me the wrong way. Psychotherapy won't work for everyone. 
One has to be in the right place in one's mind. One has to stumble on a good therapist and be in a position to give the process due time and care. But all that said, with a fair wind, psychotherapy also has the chance to be the best thing we ever get around to doing. If you're interested in trying psychotherapy, the School of Life offers a service in person in London or by Skype around the world. Click on the link for further details. So I got to the end of that video and I was like, oh, wow, yeah, I mean, I, they're a big channel. I guess I'm not surprised that they're selling things, but they're literally selling psychotherapy. They're selling the exact thing that was talked about in the video. That makes the video like an advertisement, right? I mean, you go to their website and you can see they have an extensive program for doing psychotherapy with people online and they basically are directing you to that in this video doesn't that seem a little weird like to not be honest like at the beginning but just at the end once they've like sold you this picture of like psychotherapy is the thing that works so if you go to their website you realize first of all sadly for me they don't do psychotherapy with people from the u.s currently maybe it has to do with regulations on psychotherapy in the u.s or just liability concerns but either way, they don't offer it. But if you want to actually get psychotherapy through this thing, uh, you have to pay a lot of money. And you don't even get to choose the therapist that you work with at first. Uh, but they maybe let you, you know, talk to the therapist about finding a different therapist if it's not a good fit. And they have a 48-hour cancellation policy? Like, come on, bro. 48 hours and you're going to, like, 24 hours is the norm. That's really annoying. You know, you're sick, you have something come up, another medical appointment, and you have to pay a full 120 US dollars to cancel your appointment. The point is, this is for rich people. I'm here trying to talk about therapy because I think it should be accessible to everybody. The ideas of therapy, I want to motivate people to maybe do therapy. I don't, you know, I don't really care that much. I'm just here talking about my interest and stuff. But like most therapists you find are going to be somewhere in between, maybe do some CBT, some psychodynamic psychotherapy, or yeah, motivational interviewing is what I do, which is really great as well. But you kind of shift in between these things. You don't have to be always rigid in one approach, but if you got hundreds of dollars to spend every week, go for it. I do not recommend the School of Life though. Go find one in your area. All right, thank you so much for watching. Uh, check out my other videos. I have a lot of them about therapy. I have videos about all kinds of different stuff, politics, media, um, philosophy a little bit. And uh, I just want to take a second to really thank my people on Patreon. Thank you so much for supporting, throwing a few dollars a month and helping these videos kind of come to fruition. It's I'm going to keep making them even if people don't support me on Patreon because you can't stop me. Um, but it really means a lot. And I want to get more support financially. I want to be able to do this, spend even more time doing this and uh, potentially invest in more equipment and stuff like that. But anyways, thank you so much to Elise. Put my name in the credits, Winky Face, and another really cool anonymous person. Uh, Y'all are the best. And yeah, if you're watching this and you like Twitch, come follow me on Twitch. I do chess streams like almost every night nowadays where I'm just playing chess and talking about life. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, let me know what you thought. And uh, yeah, um, I could do more of these types of videos if you'd like. Bye. Thank you.